Well, we seem to have more and more good news for the owner of this uh, 1930 BSA 350 sloper engine. And uh, I've got the bottom end all put back together now, completed. Got all the cams and timing gears in there and everything and the oil pump drive, so on and so forth. And I've managed to also get this thing fixed. This is a little telltale to let you know that there's oil pressure when the engine's running. And uh, basically, the oil, there's the sort of end feed for the crank behind that bulge there. The oil is pumped in and when it reaches enough pressure, it'll force this plunger out against the spring. Now, there was no spring in there. Well, there was about half a coil I found. So, I've improvised and I found quite a soft spring that fits. So I'm hoping that it'll work, but there's a possibility that there might have to be some experimentation with that. But uh, if the engine started and this moves out like that, it'll be working. If it doesn't, then the spring will be too strong for it. But um, I doubt that will be the case, even with uh, a roller bearing bottom end. We probably have enough pressure to lift that. So it's all done to the best of my knowledge. Um, what else can I say about this? Oh yes, the piston, the good jump pin is a good fit in the small end. It's also a good fit in the piston. The piston is a good fit in the bore. The bore is pretty good. And the piston rings gap nicely in the bore. So none of this is giving any cause for concern obviously there's a bit of wear in the bore uh, you know it is used it's done some miles but there's no excessive wear and no sort of alarming well scoring uh, there isn't really much in the way of any scoring at all anyway um, but at some time the piston there has been a tightening up of this engine at some time in the past um, I've cleaned all that up carefully you can basically just sort of gently go over it crossways not up and down with a very fine flat file never use emery um, just in case there's any material that actually got stuck to the piston when it tightened up that's all you want to do you're not worrying about low spots or making it look like new again so I've done that and like I say the piston the fit of the piston in the bore is good. Um, it's certainly not overly loose, well as can be sort of uh, ascertained by looking at these nipping up marks that at some point in the past it was a close enough fit that it nipped up. Maybe it ran short of oil, maybe it was overheated but um, I checked it in the bore there and I'd say that the piston, the bore and the rings are all good to go. And that's not just a sort of um, Oh, well, it's an old thing, it probably won't get used much sort of attitude. They really are all good enough to go back together and sort of cover further miles. So, the only thing that I haven't checked yet is the condition of the valves and the valve guides in the cylinder head. And also, I need to speak to the owner and see if he'd like this blasted and painted, and well, likewise the head if he wants this done. But basically, it's just going to be a straightforward reassembly job. All I've got to do now, I made a gasket up, obviously, for the timing cover. I'll have to make a gasket up for the cylinder base. Got a head gasket there. This is a copper sandwich ring. I think there's probably a bit of asbestos in there between the two layers of copper. Um, so that can be re annealed and used again. So I already know that we can build it up to cylinder head level and everything will be quite serviceable and ready to go again and at the very worst with the cylinder head it'll only be a matter of dealing with valves guides and valve seats if any of them need attention or not I don't know yet but we'll soon find out probably in the next gripping installment I should imagine